Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Hamster's Hobby Hang. We got Toby with us today. How are you? Thanks for joining us. We, we're here with Chris. Mace is going to join us momentarily. Uh, I think she uh, had to use yeah, the, the bathroom. Yeah, Mace, Mace is in the bathroom. Oh. Yeah, she'll be here soon. Oh, wait. I think it sounds like she's done. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, finished up in there. <laughs> I also am not entirely sure like how loud the balance of the flush sound was it could have been like a storm of a flush oh man <laughs> I didn't wash my hands bold, bold of you to move bold of you to move the toilet in the middle of your living room like that <laughs> right I, I you coming over you know it's more convenient for me <laughs> all right well. so so mace has bought a castle in which she can, in she this can economy? go in it. Yeah. In this economy. In this economy, yeah, I guess uh, my Bitcoin really has taken off, so. So that's the, so that's or, the. Sorry, that's not the, Bitcoin, um, Dogecoin, that's what I've been using. Man, you, 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 you really do get uh, less space in those uh, New York castles, huh? Oh, it's smaller, but like it's more conveniently located, I'll tell you that. So, yeah, I own, I own two houses. However, the second house is actually inside my first house. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, like, what are you doing? Are you assembling your royal guard or raising taxes? Or what are you doing with the your kingdom oh, today? Taxes are incredibly low, actually. Oh, nice. Here. Um, I decided that if Amazon doesn't pay taxes, my kingdom won't pay taxes. <laughs> um, and we'll live off the side of the land. All right. But, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what, like, obviously priorities. The first thing you want to do when you establish a kingdom is decorate the kingdom. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm actually going to put on this. And I'm thinking of names as well. Um, so it's going to be a multi-week process. I didn't realize how big this is. So right. we'll continue with it through the hobby hangs. But Topula says we might as well start what's your stance on surf rights uh surfers should be allowed to do whatever they want frankly <laughs> they're just riding yeah, right the wave <laughs> yeah, yeah hang ten, buddy. Surf, all right surf, surf, surf rights are radical <laughs> surf. okay tell me what are you working on today i'm just going to be drawing today like i, I it was a drawing i started i don't know i just want to be drawing and it's like and it's like draw out a part of the the world I've been thinking about. Oh, like a setting? Yeah. Oh, cool. I can show you a little bit. It's like this, almost like kind of sci-fi. It's just like a, like a under, it's like kind of under where, uh, like people like live. Like, but it's like this city that has like streets and streets just stacked on top of each other. Right. And there's like blocks where just like the columns of streets. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I've been thinking about it for a while, so I'm just been wanting to draw it. And, yeah, I started a little bit ago, but I'm going to keep working on it. Well, I know that is, I noticed you started with a building. You studied architecture, right? Yeah, this yeah. is kind of based on the old architectural concept, like, of, like the, I think it was like the Tower and City or something like that. And I don't know, I just call this like this idea. Like, it, you see those paintings and like drawings a lot of these like crazy like cities that are built on top of each other so yeah like, like that love it yeah yeah you it's said like, you said it's under like a regular city like for like this could be like under new york city under the streets awesome so it's like kind of like, like underground people <laughs> and so uh i remember you mentioned to me you're kind of using the uh the slower season to you know practice up some some different artistic skills so you've been doing a lot yeah. of drawing and stuff i could be doing more <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah, i get that and then my client has been like kind of just questions where all the time had gone but I right do more awesome that. yeah it's interesting um, right like i 
looking back, like I have used the pandemic to kind of pick up some new skills and interests. Like honestly, like mini painting has been something I've largely done so much of because of the pandemic. Uh, but I look back at it and I still feel like I haven't actually put that much time into, uh, like I still feel like I've wasted a lot of time. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> I kind of want to settle on one or a couple of things more. I'm just like, I get so indecisive of what I want to do. I yeah. feel that. Yeah, narrowing things down is the hardest part, honestly. Yeah. It doesn't help that I feel like another time when I come on, I want to try doing like 3D modeling and stuff like that. Which, yeah. Maybe I'll do that ne next time or something. Yeah, that'd be super cool. Ooh, It'd be awesome yeah. to see some of that. Uh... I did yeah, a little like, bit. Just like share then. your screen in the Discord. So yeah. yeah. Probably. I have, I borrowed the work, the work Wacom to be able to do the pen, so. Oh yeah, remember how we set up that Wacom at work and then the pandemic hit and I don't think anybody ever used the Wacom in the office? Oh man. Yeah. I mean, it's sitting right next to me right now, so I'll use yeah. it. Because <laughs> yeah, we got that delivered, I think in December? Yeah. I've been set up All things work. worked. A lot of developments were happening around happening around then and all of a sudden just were cut because pandemic and then we got busy with Kickstarter. Yeah. Man, the idea it's weird. Like I'm very excited for another Kickstarter. I really enjoy those times, but at the same time, thinking about the fact that it's ostensibly happening this year is uh is wild to me. It's a yeah. weird feeling. See. Well, Chris is doing some uh, some of your hellscape stuff, right? Yeah, I, ha I only have a couple things outside of the actual terrain itself, which I still need to paint, uh, that I haven't done yet. So I figured I'm going to take a stab at doing the walls of fire and uh, the soul cage today. And so I asked you for some advice on how to set up the cage. So I'm going to where all the runes are, and I'm getting white down in the cracks to, sp uh, to start with. Uh, nice. you said that'll make the runes pop better and so if they don't um I'm gonna be mad at you <laughs> anything that's glowing I'll often base in white or ivory make it then, really uh, bright and then depending on how quickly this goes I've also got some I've got more battle tech minis I need to do and I've got some orcs from ragecraft that I need to do oh sweet so, we'll see if I get to those well, I I have one of my Skybird Dwarves that I've had sitting around for a while, and I am pulling out these oil paints that I've had for, like, over a year that I have uh, been too afraid to use. I've never used oil paints traditionally. I've never used them at all. So I based it in acrylic just to get some colors down and have it set so that I can paint over it with oils and it won't mess it up. But yeah. we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we were talking before we started uh, the timing of the Hot Pocket debacle. We were talking yeah. all about Hot Pockets and our thoughts on them, and then it turns out they're full of glass. <laughs> what? Wait, yeah. what was this thing? What happened? We, last stream, we, were talk we got on a whole thing about Hot Pockets. I don't know who started it. I don't know who went way in too in-depth on Hot Pockets. Yeah, I can't, of think of a, can't, can't think of a single person here who's been obsessed with Hot Pockets the last several months. <laughs> but then, literally, like, within a, the next day, it might have been that night even, there was an article that went out. They've been recalled because they're, like, full of glass and plastic and stuff. There's, like, a batch of them that went out and something went wrong. And there was, like, something from the factory or whatever broken there. <laughs> yeah, which is a big no-no because a lot of people have glass allergies. And then, right. You know, on the box about it. Yeah, I mean, like, some people can handle glass, but, like, some, it's just when they eat it that is when it really kind of causes a reaction, you know? It's one of those things where, you know, you're only supposed to have it as a, as a baby, but we've gotten <laughs> used to, we've gotten used to still consuming it over time. Right. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's not natural, and our body, like, needs help with it sometimes. Uh, you gotta take oh, it you're it. talking about a lactose intolerance. Oh. Yeah. Lactose. <laughs> <laughs> So, one of my favorite memes is all those like uh, memes that are like making new 
weird flavors out of both Hot Pockets and Pop-Tarts. Have you seen those? No. Where it's like, it's like, I just saw them. But we've had a few good ones. Man, like, so many of those things that pockets. like... It's cold. Or like, like tar <laughs> flavored or like a ranch flavored Pop-Tart. I mean, yep. that Cunningham muffin skit is a classic. <laughs> and I feel like it's, I feel like that's the basis for all food related comedy is uh the Cunningham muffin skit. Is that the one I'm thinking yeah. of with the uh... glass? Yes, yeah. Blood <laughs> muffins. Cuz I saw that definitely. Boysenbury. I think we watched it during Wildlands. I think we put it on for some reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You guys want to watch it there. Uh It's a classic skit. I don't think it's the same person that did the shoes song. No, it is. It is. No, it is. It, it is. is. Nice. Yeah. I wonder what they're up to, because, man, they, they were really nailing it in that specific YouTube comedy scene at that specific time. Yeah, they came out they with something new... in the past year. Yeah. 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 It was about masks, I think. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah, I want to shop at. And it was somebody who was complaining about how they couldn't go into stores without masks. And it was... Very similar to shoes. Well, I'm going a little overboard with the white here, but that's fine. It's gonna get covered up later. Anyway. What do you guys think I should put on the side of my castle? Uh, boat. Baby statues, like you know, you know, on the end of boats. Like how Baby statues? Yeah, like, you know how on the end of boat, like, pirate ships, they have those, like, mermaid statues on front? A masthead? Well, I'm going to put a baby statue on my castle. Yes. Like a baby in the same pose. And just like... You can be the queen of babies. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at me Lord. weird? It's a good idea. <laughs> I don't know. Verdict says the blood Man. of your enemies. You know, Mace, we really try to foster I, I like a that. collaborative environment here, and the fact that you're just shutting down Toby like that without listening to him is... I'm not uh, really shutting rough. him down. I'm just trying to consider it. And my considerations tell me that's not a that's not how I'm feeling about this castle. Okay, well, it's not just your castle, Mace. It totally is! <laughs> I, I, mm, I don't know. I bought it. Yeah, with the money that you earn from Dwarven Forge. Therefore, it's Dwarven Forge property. <laughs> I hate this. That's not logic. That's not how laws work. Otherwise, I don't have anything. Well, that's true, actually. That one I can't uh, help you with. Give me back my property, Chris. Mace likes Five to walk dollars. more when it's hurting Toby. Yes. <laughs> I've got most of the white down at this point. Are there runes on the up the sides here? Yeah, I think I think if I remember right, there are. Oh yeah, yeah. Le legal disclaimer: Do not feed your baby glass. The official stance of Dwarven Forge is that you should, in almost all cases, not feed your baby glass. I cannot. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for Jay to email me. Oh no! Like, <laughs> were you telling people to feed babies glass? <laughs> on the anvil we can't we can't. yeah but tiny pieces so they can't choke we on can't, it we can't do that we can't we can't take a pro glass stance right like people are gonna hurt their babies and then what i hope i hope people can read the sarcasm i hope it's something at least as specifically ridiculous as that we don't have to worry <laughs> about it and it's the same thing as like the type pod thing man <laughs> Yeah, what if I make it a giant frog? A giant frog, yeah, a giant it. frog figurehead on your uh, on your castle? Like these could be the eyes right here. I don't know if you can see them. Sure. And then this could be like the mouth belly thing. So that's very on brand and also cute, and I like it. Like that definitely says, "Hey, this is Mesa's castle. There's a frog here." That is true. And then you could take a picture of yourself eating toad style inside that castle and send it to them to get Whoa. a free sponsorship and you can become like the, t the toad style like, the toad 
Um, my other thoughts are I could paint it with some like cool, very modern, very geometric designs with pink. Or I don't know if you guys know what Toile de Joie is. Ah, yes. Yeah, I like wine. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um, you know that fabric that's like light blue and on white or like China, like China like... dishes. No. porcelain oh oh like that like that specific like pattern that you yeah. see on like china oh yeah 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 it's something about that because it's already white and then i could just do blue scenes i'm already i can already tell that like what's really going to make this come alive is now i get like the room color down in the creases and then i dry brush over it exactly I'm very excited. I'm becoming paint literate. <laughs> yeah, Jill, I've watched a lot of James Wapple. He kind of inspired me to uh, have the courage to uh, pick up some oil paints. Nephlight, yeah, absolutely. Everyone, if you're on the Discord, go, well, go on the Discord and check out uh, Nephlight's uh, Dread Hollow pieces. They look freaking awesome. All of the the flowers and the leaves and it's very colorful and awesome it looks very fantasy forest i love it also one thing you got to realize Netflight, is that all of us also deal with imposter syndrome uh, syndrome to like an incredible degree oh yeah <laughs> uh, so however insecure you feel about your stuff do not think like man i wish that i was uh as talented as the dwarven forge guys so i could be just as competent Odds are you are just as talented because uh, Hamster also struggles to believe that he's as good as he is. <laughs> so, yeah the uh, the stream team no knows it best because they've seen me right before we start the presentation. <laughs> yeah, um, all the all the real ones, the OG fans uh, will remember back when Hamster painted the Corvus Cabal, uh, back in one of the very first like earliest painting streams. And he was so nervous about showing people that paint scheme because he thought it was going to be awful. And I think it's one of the best looking paint schemes I've ever seen. It's like this, <laughs> oh. it's just this very vibrant, like aqua uh, cyan with like orange highlights and stuff. It's very, very good. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, you guys made me feel better about it that day. <laughs> that was a rough one. I don't think we've ever had a situation where anybody's looked at anything you've made and not liked it. Well, you know, it's the age old. What's that? I'll be right back. Keep going. Oh, I'm you're, you're going to head, head through the fortress? Yeah. I, something's on the other side of the room. <laughs> Wait, is there an opening on the other side? She barely fits through it. That's a, why, why did she? This is such a bad idea. <laughs> I cannot believe she genuinely. It's not even the money that's the problem. It's the space. Yeah, that's. Why is it? It was, it was very cheap. That's fine. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's not even the money that's the concern. I can't believe you took up that much of your apartment with that castle. I didn't realize it was gonna be this big. I also didn't realize um, I would be buying more furniture. Do you realize that you have the most beautiful face? <laughs> yes, I do. Yo, can we talk about the Flaming Lips? Any Flaming Lips fans here? The I heck know. is that? <laughs> oh, Hamster. Fan. Oh, Hamster. Fake fan. Fake fan. The Flaming Lips. <laughs> the flaming Lips. They're from Canada. They're very cool. They're very uh, weird. I like weird. Yeah. You, they you have probably some like songs it. Where I love, and they have some songs where I'm kind of like, a little too experimental for me. But, um... Miley There's Cyrus did an album covering Beatles songs, and they did um, that uh, Jai Guru Deja one, and it's the only version of that song that I like, including the original. Yeah, I really like, um, I really like Race for the Prize. Uh, Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots, or whatever that's called. That's it's like a classic. solid album. It's like a really nice yeah. album. Um, I think I've heard of that. There's some very, there's some very good tracks on there. Uh, and Gasoline. Do, do, do you realize is probably their is is Do you realize their biggest song? I would probably. say so. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think Do You Realize is the one that people know. And you, you'd probably recognize it if you heard it. Um, she Don't Use Jelly is probably the only other one that I could think would be more popular. But Do You Realize has more of, like, it's more recognizable sonically. Yeah. Well, because it also works as a okay. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna I'm gonna start trying. It's number one on Spotify. If that makes sense. Um, it's it's also it's a super easy one that for people to go like, oh, this is our song, you know, like because it can be looked at as like a love ballad and all that. Um, what am I doing? Right. Okay. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try doing this wall of fire and see if Hamster hasn't painted it. So uh, we're gonna see how this comes out. I'm using the Goldens. Naphthal red light to hopefully do this, keep it semi transparent still. It's still kind of translucent. I think what I want to do actually is thin it out with, uh. I think I want to thin this out actually. Thin it even more? Oh yeah, it's yeah. looking like it's going on pretty thick. Are you using the Wacom, uh, Toby? I think not yet, really, but I will. Okay, um, cool. I'd, I'd like. I just want to see what you draw. I'm not. I'm just doing it on paper right now. I'm just drawing right. paper right now. Like, yeah. Are you? Yeah, I should do that again. I did that a, a while ago when I had like a, a knockoff Wacom, and it was fun. And he, yeah, I used to do a lot of like drawing and stuff like that. I just fell out of it, and I don't like that. Um, Casey gave me her old Wacom tablet. It's not great, but like it works. Uh, not on my computer, but if you want that, I have it at the office. Genuinely, honestly, like. Just having a tablet is such a huge step up from trying to draw with a mouse. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yep. <laughs> Holy crap. I don't know, but you can get the master. Tyler, Tyler getting one was big for him. His uh, concept art for natural ones and stuff got way easier to make once he got a tablet. Yeah, but you can't do the magic of uh, like MS Paint. Drawings with a mouse with a Wacom tablet. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure mouse wins on this one. You've all seen Ringo Starr's MS Paint. Yeah. Drawing, right? Okay. Yes. Good. You're a baby. That and uh. I her... think about buying that. I was gonna say that and uh. Uh, Bush's paintings are on a similar level. Oh. I think. They're just cursed those? art. Could you imagine? Yeah. Could you could you imagine? Because I've seen the photos of, of, of Bush like painting veterans. Could you imagine if those photos were taken and he was having like veterans come in and sit down and then he just like <laughs> took out a laptop and was just drawing them on a trackpad in Microsoft Paint? <laughs> like having a model sit in for you to do a Microsoft Paint drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want to. I want to see somebody try to like remake the Mona Lisa in Microsoft Paint now, like like as hard as they can to do it as faithfully as possible. I'm that sure would be a fun can. like YouTube thing, like you know, like a YouTube channel thing, just, or just like, yeah. Or anything. It honestly just... sounds like an Unis Honest video. What? It sounds like an Unis Honest video, like oh, the Unis Honest would have done. Uh, Rest in peace. But probably. It is interesting. So Unis Honest was a project. Uh, between Markiplier and Ethan from Crank Gameplays where they challenge themselves to make a video every day for a year straight and at the end of that year uh, they deleted it all. So uh, it was a lot of different random stuff got made. Uh, there were definitely like certain kinds of categories of videos and like the pandemic hit and so for like a month or two there was a period of time where they were like just making uh making videos like on a call uh, like over the internet and stuff doing like quizzes and the like 
uh, and then they were like, we have to, we have to stop doing this and like actually just find ways that we can be shooting stuff in person again. Um, but there's some really interesting stuff that came out of it, and it's it was a very fascinating part of YouTube culture and history. Uh, yep. The point is, there would be some videos that were like very kind of serious videos where they would like talk about like beers and stuff like that and then they would be like this episode we're playing nutball Nutball. <laughs> uh, yeah so you know it was a very interesting channel but uh remaking the mona lisa in microsoft paint sounds like something they would have done but they didn't so now i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna blow up <laughs> on youtube there you go and you know what? If they did do it, that video doesn't exist anymore, so nobody will remember. <laughs> That's not true. A lot of people will remember. That had a massive following. Yeah. Do you I think there were good live live streams where, like, they live streamed for 12 hours before deleting it, and I think there were over 10 million people watching. Oh my god. I think? Did I have the numbers right? It might have actually been oh, like 4.2 million. I'm trying to remember what, like, what the numbers were. Not 10 million. million. I think it was like 4.2 million is what they got to. That's it was a lot, yeah. It was it was massive. Uh, Miles and I watched the as much of the stream as we could. I actually had to stop to do a Dwarven Forge stream during that during that live stream, but we went right back to watching it after. It was interesting. There's some pretty good coverage out of this. Uh... I think I actually want to use this red for the runes. I'm being real. It's very bright. That'd work. That'd look cool. I'm trying to figure out if I should try to pop the interference on this uh, on this cage somewhere. But Ooh. I don't know. Maybe I'll use it for the gold. Maybe I'll use it for gold highlights. I don't know. I wish I had a. I wish I had a yellow, or like an interference yellow. But I don't know if they make it. I don't have it if they do. Yeah, I've only seen like a gold. I don't know, like a metallic -y looking gold. I don't know about a. I haven't seen a yellow, but I haven't looked for one either. Yeah, I need to actually look through the through the thing. Thanks. I got them all for Christmas. Uh, I think it was a early one. You know what? It's still pretty transparent. Yeah. I think I need a bigger brush, though. Because, I mean, I'm not trying to be <clears throat> fancy with this. I'm just trying to cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like to report that Spotify's Discover Weekly is killing it again this week. <laughs> Oh, this still Vanessa girl is, which is very, very good. What's everybody working on at home? Also, uh, Jimmy Hayes says, hey, Toby, good to see you on the high yeah. end. Oh, hey, guys. Yeah, I just saw that comment. This time I have the, the Twitch up. Yeah, I want to come on here more. Like, the one time I did it was, I liked it a lot, so. Yeah, we're going with a pretty open concept for this thing. Basically, any time you want to come on, like. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm being like, I need to... I need to make something. like a custom asset. I'm, I need to get you like some overlays that are better for having multiple people on. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I need to. I need to do that. I'll. I'll, I'll line it up this week. So I'm trying to. We're gonna make some new overlays for uh, the anvil and stuff too for when Nate's doing it at home. So. Oh, nice. Should. I'll try and add that to the list of stuff. To... I feel like I'm getting back to being productive again after a long period of struggling with it. Yeah, I need to force myself to be more productive and just want to, there's so much I want to do. It's like, yeah. I just get like stuck on the how do I even do it phase and how complex is this? And just like, let's go back to just thinking about it and it never progresses. Yeah, decision paralysis is the worst. Yeah. Like the part where you know you want to do something, but figuring out exactly what it is is difficult. And so you just end up doing nothing for a while. 
Yep, that's me for the past many, many years. I suck. I feel that. Yeah. That's it's something weird. I've always struggled with this year. Definitely. This last year, understandably, made it worse than <laughs> than it was. Yeah. I'm, well, it makes me feel worse because I have more like, time at home, and then I still manage to not get shit done. Well, that's part of the thing I'm trying to remember too. Is basically everything. Like what we're going through is essentially. The pandemic has been more or less a traumatic event. Like, we have to be operating our own city. And a lot of us have been, you know, trained in this mindset where you have to be productive all the time. And a lot of us have been, have been given shame in the idea of having free time and doing things where you're not, you know, uh, being productive. And so having more time at home makes us feel like we're spending more time kind of being lazy or not doing anything. And... You know, that takes a mental toll. Yeah. So. I think also the hobby hangs has have like, it's helped me actually do hobbies. Because if it weren't for this um, being a weekly thing that I were, was doing, I probably wouldn't be doing nearly as much productive, like, creative hobby or, like, personal yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah, that's definitely. why I want to be out here more, because... <laughs> I like to push for it. I would I mean, not I have painted the miniatures. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah, I'm making a lot more progress on painting than I would without the hobby hang for sure. Because I still like, I still like think like, oh, you know what? I should paint some stuff and get paralyzed. Like I put off starting Wildlands, or Wildlands. I put off starting like to paint my Hellscape terrain so much now, but like I can't put off doing the hobby hang. So it right. makes me actually bust some stuff out. And the nice thing is. It's letting me slowly put a dent in that big, overwhelming, you know, pile of hellscape stuff that I have. And so, over time, like, there are now less boxes in that pile, and it looks less imposing to start. So, I don't know. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, the hang makes me try stuff, too, because sometimes it always... You, Somehow it always sneaks up on me, so I'm like, oh, okay, I need something for hobby hang. What do I have around? Well, normally I would do this, but I, I just see this and this together, so I'll just try that. You know, different materials or paints or whatever. Yeah. I vote for the next material that you have to use to paint. Condiments. Condiments? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah, when are we gonna, when are we, we going to do some Picorni ketchup? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Have you guys ever yeah, had they're... that thing where it's like you're scared to start on something because you don't want to mess it up? That's extreme. My entire life. Okay. <laughs> like when you get a new notebook, you're like, I can't write in this. I'm not prepared. Yeah, it's like, and you have some, you get something new, and then you just it's been sitting there for a while, and then once you start using it, it's like, oh, it's not bad at all. Yeah, I have that fear with this because it's not like I can keep buying cardboard castles. <laughs> you could. Ah, uh, I mean, I could. I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, look, Mace. It can't get any worse than it already is. You know. It can. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, it, it can't get it can't get worse than it is. Yeah, it can. Mustard yellow is so done. I need some sriracha red and queso white. There you go. Man, I really need to just put the time into making some very good nachos at at home. I know I can. I know I can do it, and I keep like getting the stuff to cook, and then losing the motivation to actually cook. I guess that's one thing I've been doing more. Cooking. Maybe. At the at the start yeah. of the quarantine, I started cooking a lot more. And I'm still cooking more than I used to, but I definitely kind of uh, tapered off after a bit. What sort of food yeah. have you been making, Toby? I like making pasta sauces a lot. Ooh. Like, oh, nice. Scratch, like not just out of the can. It does... 
use a base as of a, like a you know like a store bought one, but I like bring so much in there that it's like different. I like making meatballs for it. Oh, that's right. That sounds good. Oh. Yeah, I was. Yeah, me and you talked about that after like yeah. cooking, like, experimenting with eggs and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to do some cooking too, but I I'm in this kind of what Chris was saying about like I'll have some stretches of doing it more and then I'll just lose motivation. Yeah, I'm trying to, the only thing I want to do is I really just want to cut down on the time that I spend staring at the wall. That's the main thing. I like, feel that. Like man, just just actually play a game you've been wanting to play or something. If 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 you do not currently have the motivation to work, then like let yourself do something that you're going to enjoy doing instead of just staring and doing nothing yeah. thinking that you should be feeling differently than you are i need a game to play did you just start a big stardew valley farm <laughs> <gasps> i want to try hades it's... sorry i'll try that i guess i've had hades installed for so long i need to just actually play it yeah my friend i saw my friend playing and i really like how the maps look it's uh from everything i'm hearing it's an achievement in basically every way like yeah Apparently, there's like the voice acting is amazing, even though they just use the people in their small like. I mean, Super Giant. Like, Super Giant is a very good studio. I've yeah. liked everything they've made. I haven't played Pyre yet, but like Bastion and Transistor both are very good. Yeah, they're, I like Bastion a lot. They're a great studio. Yeah, I remember you telling me to try out Hades. I'm sure. I've definitely purchased it. Yeah, but you, like I was talking about games to play, and you mentioned Hades. Oh yeah, you know, I yeah. I I definitely uh, I had heard good things about it, and just the art style looks so cool that it's like definitely yeah. worth a look. I like how, especially like how it's like the maps are all two D, and but they make it look so good. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's 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 a super giant style. Like yeah, I like it a lot. That that's the interesting thing about it is all their games technically are fairly different, but they use the same kind of interface or like visual thing they're all 2.5d uh they all move at generally the same pace have the same kind of have the same kind of physics um but you know hades is a is a roguelike and bastion is Bastion and Transistor are closer together, I guess, but Transistor is a completely linear experience. It's meant to be like replayed over and over again, whereas Bastion is more of a kind of freeform RPG. Um, man, everything they do is very good, though. It's I'm seeing it on like everybody's like game of the year list. If it's not their number one, it's still in their top ten. Like. Regardless of whether that's usually the kind of game they play or not. I got into this weird thing of just like barely wanting to start new games because it's like more convenient to, to just like open up an old one and just like make a little progress in it because like I want to like get myself ready or like look into what's good and stuff and it's like it's boring so <laughs> gotta crack that. I think I 100%ed four games. Uh over the Christmas break, within the span of two weeks. Oh my god, nice. <laughs> Three of them were pretty short, so like it wasn't like a big deal. Like Snakey Bus, literally, I played that game for a half hour. It's just that easy to 100%. Uh, Snakey Bus? Snakey Bus, yeah. It was a meme game. It's not really... I. It's not something I would go out of my way to recommend, necessarily. It's a, it's a good way to kill some time. It's a good, like, listening to music or podcast game. But I've got... I've got... I've got other games for that purpose that I prefer. Um, so then, like, I 100 percent of Carrion, uh, uh, Fez, I 100 percent and then AI The Somnium Files, 100 percent of that. That was, like, the only long game, really. Um, I have a problem. I like 100 percent games a lot, which is probably not smart. Humble brag? I didn't say it's a humble brag. Like, to a lot of people, <laughs> it's like, wow, you really wasted your time. <laughs> I don't think I've ever 100% at a game. Like, not even Super Mario Sunshine. I need to go back and play. I got the 3D, like, the 3D collection, and 
I was gonna play through that, all three of them, but yeah. I got the I got the 3D collection too, but it's mostly because I didn't want to like miss my chance to get it. I haven't actually. There's so many other things I want to play before I go back and play those games. Although, man, I really yeah. do like Sunshine. I would like to get back into Sunshine. I like how they re-added the GameCube controls support. Yeah. Why didn't I they wish add? that they had done more to actually like improve the quality of life and like. I wish that it wasn't just like basically emulators. Yeah. I guess it's the main thing. I would have liked them to have actually put work into the re-release, but whatever. It's possible to play them without the original consoles so what's the silliest game you 100 percented? like that you think it's the most waste of time i'm currently working on yakuza 0 which is not not great uh <laughs> i love yakuza 0 it's one of my favorite games of all time which is why i'm bothering to 100 percent it but man a lot of the stuff that they want you to do to 100 percent yakuza 0 is absolutely mind-numbing <laughs> it's it's playing a bunch of poker. It's I learned how to play mahjong. I learned how to play mahjong so that I could get yeah, some of the achievements in Yakuza Zero. Yeah. But here's the thing, I really like mahjong. It turns out mahjong is great. Yeah. Um. But some of the mini games in there are not as great, and a, a lot of the stuff involves like a lot of grinding in ways that just isn't really all that fun. Um. You put in over 400 hours of Hades. Wow. Oh, your SO has okay. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say ever. No, I've 100 it way more than. Let me just check my Steam profile, and that's not even gonna cover like the yeah. PS4 platinums. It's like a 100 percented Spider-Man at uh, PS4. Uh, Infamous, Infamous 2. Uh... Okay, so I have 44. 44 on Steam is what it's saying. Oh, some of these it doesn't really count. Like a bird story, you get 100% for literally just beating the game, and it's like an hour-long game. A short hike is very good. That's a really... I think you guys... I think everybody here would actually like a short hike a lot. It's an indie game. Remember you mentioned uh, it. Yeah, it's a very it's a very chill time. Uh, it's, it's pretty short. It's a couple hours long to like 100% it, if you want 100% it, which is just exploring the entirety of the island, which is not big, and it's not frustrating or stressful or anything it's a very relaxing experience and it's also very touching um 100 the ai somnium files which is it's a it's a murder mystery it's it's from the team that did uh uh the zero escape series which is a series of visual novel slash kind of murder mystery puzzle solving things that also use high concept stuff like uh multiverse theory and a lot of other philosophical and phys physics things which are it's a great series, and AI Summoning Files is also pretty good. Uh, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, 100% of that. That's fantastic. Yeah, I need to go back and play that. Like I, I started it's so it. good. It's so good. Yeah. Um, what else have I 100%ed? Botanicula. I don't remember that. I think that's a... I do remember it. It's like a, a point-and-click kind of puzzle-solving adventure game that's just very cute. Carrion, 100%ed. 100% of Costume Quest. Rampa 1 and 2. I still need to do the rest of the series. Oh, yeah. I 100%ed Death Stranding recently. I forgot about that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was like 90 hours. <laughs> uh, Donut County, Dropsy, Evil Land, Evil Land 2, Fez, Finding Paradise, Florence, Greece, First Story, Hexologic, Inside, Jazz Punk, Last Word. Wow, some of these games I completely forgot I even ever played. And yeah, like Last Word was a pretty interesting game. Uh, Lexica, Life is Strange. Oh, MacDo's 95 is fascinating. It's a it's a puzzle game that puts you inside like an operating system, and it's just you figuring out how to mess with the different parts of this operating system to uh, get the achievements. Message Quest, Nier Automata, uh, Outer Wilds was a very good 100%. Skyborn, Snakey Bus, Superland, Tacoma, Haunted Island, Sexy Brutal. I need to do the video on that still. Walking Dead, 1 and 2, Thomas Was Alone, To the Moon, Typewriter, and Zero Escape. Man. You like Gone Home? I wasn't a huge Ooh. fan of it yeah, I did when play I initially that. played it. But I think if I go back and play it... I don't know, there's things that like... There's things I do like about it. I guess I... I guess I mostly felt the writing was too predictable. What was interesting <clears throat> is I... I really like the team that worked on it, and I like most of their other stuff. So, I don't know. Yo, 
go. This is a groove. What song is this? Hey, Rabbit Burger. Our Pathetic Age by DJ Shadow, <laughs> featuring Samuel T. Herring. It's a jam. Check that out. It's very chill. Even though the title sounds a lot more depressing than the song feels. You don't usually like to walk around and do nothing in games? Uh, it depends for me. I think that's the thing. is With Gone Home, I guess I didn't feel... With Gone Home, I didn't feel like it added much to it, and I didn't feel like I actually was an active participant in it as much. But, like, I think it worked really well for stuff like Firewatch. I think Tacoma did it pretty well. Um, I like Stanley Parable quite a bit. Yeah, that was goofy. Uh, that was a fun experience. Stanley Parable? Yeah. yeah. I still need to get that last achievement, which is just leaving it on for an entire, for an entire Tuesday. <laughs> an entire what? I've gotten everything else. Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah. Isn't the game that has an achievement that's like, don't play this game for five years? Yep. Got that one. Oh, you did? Yep. <laughs> that's yep. Something else, I have every achievement about. except for leaving it open for an entire Tuesday. <laughs> uh, which I need to just I need to just do that. I should have done it over right off Monday night. <laughs> just... But it's not a demanding game, and I've got two monitors. Yeah. I could very easily just boot it up, and it wouldn't affect my daily life at all. I just got to remember to actually set it up like on a Monday night. Yeah. And then it would be another 100% game that I've got, so I really need to just do that, because I've, I've got everything else. Uh, Rabbit's complimenting your castle, Mace. Oh, thank you. Hamster, what are you painting? A dwarf, right? Oh, it's being blocked by Mace's face, actually. A dwarf? Yeah, I, I, need to, I, need to, I need to get us a... a I'll, I'll get us a better layout for next Yeah, look, here. Hey, look, I, it's a dwarf, and I'm modeling its face after Mace's. Doesn't it look great? <laughs> Doesn't it look really... <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> no, I'm uh, trying out oil paints for the first time, and uh, it is a challenge. <laughs> I'm thinking back to the other games I want to 100% now. Like, I do want to go back and 100% Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, I, I really enjoy playing that game. Like, that game is just fun to play, so I don't think I would have any problems going and, like, the main problem with that is it's just to 100% it, you got to get like an S rank in every mission, and there are a lot of missions. So it is it is very expansive, but I enjoy playing it enough that I probably, as long as I don't try to do it like all at once, I probably would be all right with it. That's wild. Any game that freaking gives you those ratings at the end of it, I always think I'm doing great, and then it's like, ah, see. <laughs> see, the good thing is I'm a god gamer. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> So that's, I've got I've got that in my pocket. Right. I'm trying to figure out why it feels so much darker today, and I just realized it's because I I turned down the brightness on my ring light for the on the anvil stream last night. I didn't turn it back up, so I need to do that actually. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Oh, that makes it so much better. Let's see what I'm doing. Oh. All right, guys. It's 649. You know what that means. Hey, hey. Back into nice. the ye royal back into outhouse. The <laughs> yeah, ye old outhouse. Back to the lava again. <laughs> Man, my Discover Weekly knows how broad my tastes are, and I really like this. Nice. From, like, Electronica to this folksy. Oh, it's Japanese It's Japanese folk rock. Yeah, there we go. Mm, this nice. Cool. This is very good, actually. I like this a lot. It's Kaho Nakamura. I should check it out. I don't know what the title of the song is, because it's written in Japanese. Uh... Oh, it's so good, though. I really... Man. Oh, what's the... Uh, I need to look up. Who is... What's the name of... Something Indigo. Uh, where is it?
Ohashi Trio is very good. Indigo La End. That's what it is. Indigo La End is a very good Japanese like indie rock band. Indigo what? Indigo La End. Hmm. I would recommend a song, but again, they're all written in <laughs> in Japanese characters that I can't read. <laughs> Just describe the character. I don't know. All right, so there's one that looks like a little guy with a hat. Um, <laughs> yeah. Otaku is a sort of a gun, or does he have a sword? He has a sword, yes. Okay. What's one on Indigo La End? Oh, you know him? Yeah, Indigo La End is extremely good. Uh, I I've really been enjoying them. Uh, Ohashi Trio has also got some very good stuff. Uh, he so some of some of his songs are in uh, English. And so I can recommend some of them. One of them is Lotus. Lotus by Ohashi Trio is fantastic. I'll check it out. I need yeah. some. some I'll, 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 I'll paint to some Ohashi Trio for sure. Uh, let's see. not applying as evenly as I want it. Yeah, that's fine. I guess the nice thing about the translucent one is it's okay if I don't hit everything because when you look into it, the color is on the other side, so it still is coloring the translucence. Check out Data Ray, Spangle Call, Lily Line, and Polka Dot Stingray. Oh man. That's a... I, uh, I brought tagalongs. You brought what? <laughs> The Girl Scout cookies? Tagalongs? Yeah. Well, that'll be nice if I nice. can them, but... So if you guys get your virtual pockets open, I'll drop one in. <laughs> My virtual hot pocket? <laughs> Is society ready to acknowledge that, like, the Girl Scout cookies are not anything special enough to, like, be this rare event that we rarely get to have? Well, isn't that what makes it more valuable? Is that you can't get it at any time of the year? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if these were, like, readily available, I would just be like, eh, I mean, they're all right. I'd go with other cookies first. <laughs> I would still buy them. That's fine, I guess. Not everybody has to have, like, you know, good taste, but... <laughs> oh, all right. Mark it. Uh, 6.53. Fight, say, fighting words say, coming out. Just gonna say, <laughs> it's her, it's, it's, it's her first, uh... Post bathroom break. <laughs> Wait, you don't, like, you don't like, like tagalongs? They're good. Like they're fine. I don't think they're anything special compared to uh, yeah, sure. Other stuff you can get. That, that's my main thing. Is I'm just like, like you kind of have bad taste for enjoying them. If if you're saying that they're like better than all the other cookies out there, I guess is the which I didn't, like. but then you still brought my bad taste into it. So. Um... Yeah, what I'm saying is I'd like to apologize. I'm saying that they're not I'm saying that they're not good enough to be treated as like this big special event, you know? That's yeah, but you call, you said I had bad taste, so you need to apologize. No. Alright, that's fine. You're here for my lawyer. <laughs> no something's bad taste, just different Yeah, we're just we're just messing with each other. This is how we communicate. What is the best cookie then? Uh, there was this, so there's this place that I used to work by. I used to work in the Time Warner Center, and there was this bakery there uh, called Bouchon Bakery, and they made these, uh, these peanut butter cookies that had, like, a peanut butter gram, like, exterior, Ooh, and then just some of the best peanut butter filling I've ever, I've ever tasted, and I would get the and they were like pretty big cookies too, and so I would get those, and those were just phenomenal. So the best cookies I've ever had, like honestly. Um, is that store still there? I don't know if they're still there. That's the thing is like, especially after the pandemic, I have no idea what's still there. The place I used to work isn't there anymore. Uh, I know at least one of the restaurants is still there. What is the best cookie that I can reasonably buy without driving cross country? <laughs> That's a good point. Um, man. You know, I had a realization. 
I was super into the, like the the EL fudge cookies when I was a kid, and they were on sale oh, yeah. like a month ago. The what? I don't know what you're talking about. The Keebler EL fudge cookies. Oh. They were basically oh L yep. Keebler L. They were called EL fudge because oh. you know that yeah L fudge. The Keebler yeah e, yeah the it's, the thing. It's, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a portmanteau of of L fudge basically. They were like EL fudge is like one of the elves I guess I don't know, but that's like what I sold them to is EL fudge. I was obsessed with those as a kid. They're like little shortbread cookies, and they've got cream filling, um, or chocolate filling, or I think they also do a version with peanut, with peanut butter filling. And yeah, they're still pretty good. They're not as good as I remember them, you know. And I think it's I think just as as I've gotten older, I think just having sugar is no longer enough to like taste good to me. <laughs> like, and it, I, I'm having like the same thing with Oreos too, where like. Mostly, like, the cookie part of both the EL fudge and the Oreo cookies is not, like, working for me the way that it used to. For me, I used to love getting, like, back in middle school or something, I used to love getting those, you know, those hostess, like, apple pies or whatever. Mm -hmm. If I, I tried that again, like, maybe a year, like, two years ago, and it's like, they do, they do not taste good. Yeah, a lot of that stuff, I'm like, man, I have just, like, real, real poor taste or something. But I, th I think it is just that when you're a kid... I think it's a less developed palate, so it's like, oh yeah, sugar? I want that stuff. <laughs> uh, it's like all I can think of. I don't know, because like, I also noticed like I'm much less into cake now, and I'm very much more into pie. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Like, uh, it's, uh, I don't know if it's something biological or if it's just my specific tastes that are changing over time, because I figure everybody's taste probably changes over time. So I don't know if this is only a thing that's true for me, or if it's something that like everybody goes through as they age, or or what. I've been I I did that too, and then once I there was a time like a long time ago where I quit sugar, and then immediately when I tried sugar again, it tasted disgusting. See but, that, um, happened, that happened to me with I soda. That, that good. What? That happened to me with soda. Yeah. Um. But I think the older you get and the more you actually, like, learn to like vegetables and, like, natural foods and stuff, the more your palate develops, whether it's, When like, do you learn that? You still like <laughs> When do you learn to like vegetables? How do you do for that? Some pe for some people, never. I think the more you have them, hamster, the more you're going to like them. I know my... Th okay, so here's the thing. You got to know how to prepare them. Is the main thing. Sure. If, if your only experience with vegetables, which is what my experience with vegetables was when I was a kid, is, like canned peas that are just like put in water on the stove and then like served like that like when that's your only experience with uh with um with vegetables then yeah you're not gonna like them but man you know somebody that can make like uh that can make like a great stuffed bell pepper it's gonna blow your mind you know or, or somebody that actually knows how to prepare Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts got, like, Brussels sprouts and asparagus both get this, like, reputation for just being, like, absolutely disgusting foods uh, in in cartoons and stuff. But, like, those are some of the best-tasting vegetables if you know Especially how to prepare for, like, them. oil and, like, bake your asparagus. It's so crispy and good. Yeah, like, yeah. you can, those are so good. Oh, Rabbit's going to bed. Night, Rabbit. Night, Rabbit. Night. Hi, Rabbit. Day, hey, tomorrow. Verdix, thanks for the gifted sub, and it went to our one and only Griffin Mace. Hey, congratulations, Mace. Why weren't you subbed already? Do you want us to fail? <laughs> a little I sub hype for Verdix. Why aren't why aren't why are you why, why aren't you putting why aren't you putting that five dollars a month back in the pocket of Dwarven Forge, Mace? <laughs> I I actually I had to choose. Oh my god. <laughs> I had to choose my debit card recently because i lost my old one and so all the subscriptions i've mm -hmm. had are no longer likely like i have story. to update my card likely story. all right shut up chris i've had enough out of you <laughs> oh my god <laughs> asparagus to your shoot amazing yes um, <laughs> i hate him oh yeah i am e this is the this is the dwarven forge firewalls yes um right now i'm just basing them in the naphthal red light which is the one of the paints that Aaron suggested I get when I paint my hellscape. It's somewhat transparent, so I'm assuming this is the best thing I have on hand to do the base coat. And then I want to go in and I want to try to like highlight with some yellows and oranges, uh, do some dry brushing. But uh, for now, I'm just trying to get all 
seven of my firewalls uh kind of base coded but yeah um i'm trying to get through the last of my hellscape stuff so i last of my hellscape stuff i saw so much i haven't done any of the actual terrain yet but that's why i'm trying to do this stuff i'm trying to get everything but the terrain done so then i look at the terrain and it's like okay it's not that bad that's a good idea uh, i have not opened a single box of terrain that i've gotten yet because i'm so intimidated that that's the thing is i have all these boxes sitting on the table in my living room and they've been there for months and i keep thinking like this is the weekend when i'll just paint my 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 hellscape terrain and i get intimidated every time so i'm just trying to like whittle down those boxes bit by bit so like after this there'll be one less box because i will have my soul cage done and my walls of fire done uh at least getting some kind of here's the thing i can just do this base coat and like like these function as a wall of fire. I don't I don't need to do more than this. But like I'd like to. Um Yeah, boy, I am uh I am struggling with these oils, but I'm glad that I'm doing it. In fact, I think I'm going to every miniature I'm going to at least paint offline. That's mine. I'm going to do with oils until I figure them out. <laughs> hey, that's good on you, man. Always be learning. Yeah. Bring up the learners. The nice thing about the Walls of Fire, and I said this earlier, but I'm really appreciating it more and more the more I do this, is uh, it's really nice that because they're transparent, it's okay if you miss a spot because it's still going to look like fire because it'll be colored behind it. Right. Like the other side of the transparency will uh will still have the, the red or the orange. Hey Finley, welcome. Finley Didn't paint entirely red, that looks cool, I'll have to try that. I'm just doing this as a base mainly. Just because it's what I have on hand. I don't really have a lot of other transparents. I guess I could try. I, oh, I could try using the Reaper stuff for highlights because this is supposed to be semi-transparent. The fire orange and all that. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe after the base coat, I will take the Reaper fire orange and go over it. One fun thing. I need to. Okay, yeah. Uh, one thing like. I could do, I've lost the ability to speak, but I could make one of these walls just nothing but bricks. And then for every subscriber or viewer we get sometime, we could get, put them on the, maybe uh... it's a channel point. But like maybe we have them buy a certain amount of channel points and then I put their name on a brick. That's excellent. Because they're our foundation. Aren't they? Yeah, we're doing some memorial. The viewers, yeah, the viewers are our foundation. Six was cracking up in the Discord, so he told me he won the giveaway last night. <laughs> he did not win the giveaway last night, but they were talking—they were talking about how they were gonna mess with him. He's a very fun guy. There's a there's a lot of funny people in the group. Let's see. Here, who knows? Maybe he'll win the the giveaway to play the uh to play in the game. How are you guys doing that? Also, you might want to explain what you're talking about to Toby and Hamster. So we're working on, I, I've been working on like the best way to do this because we need to make sure that like it's it's vetted still too. Like we don't want, we don't just want to put random people on. So we want to make sure that like they are somebody who actually has been watching for a while and that we know enough of their personality to know that they're not going to like get on, get on the channel and start like saying some real messed up stuff or something. Um, so I'm working out like the exact process for doing that. I think we'll have people submit through a Google form. Uh, but I've been developing the idea and, uh, what I'm planning on having it be is something like whose role is it anyway, basically is like, is like the, the, the concept being like, kind of like an improvised, like really fun thing where it's a, it's a community driven game. So Nate wants to DM 
this one, at least the first one, but I'm thinking maybe it can be a more regular thing as well, depending on how much bandwidth it ends up taking. Um, but uh, it being a thing where, you know, it's being DM'd for some people in the community, and we have a lower number of players, probably just like three, maybe four, just to make sure that tech-wise things will run smoothly. Um, and uh, we'll let the community kind of help shape the, the game as it's going. Uh, potentially, like, let them spend channel points to help or harass the players in some way. Uh, I'm still working on exactly what those things could be, uh, but I have a couple ideas that I think are pretty good. As well as letting them, like, name NPCs, or uh, I'm thinking about doing uh, like a Who's Line gag, where we take some so some topics or phrases and uh, from the from the chat and write them down on a piece of paper and like slip them to Nate and then while he's talking, he has to randomly pull out like one of those pieces of paper and say it or work it into uh, work it into the, the the game in some way, and just think it'd be just like a, a just like a chaotic like fun thing, um, basically trying trying to go like kind of a game show route with it almost with just like letting it get like zany and stuff. So planning to do that yeah. as part of a week of special streams uh, next month uh, because it'll be our one year anniversary of being on Twitch. Nice. And so I want to do like a special episode of the Hobby Hang and a special episode of On the Anvil. Um, I'd also like to get like a special building stream in there because building is like a major part of this channel. Uh, so maybe we'll get something fun to do with that. The anniversary also lands on the hobby hang. Oh yeah, the anniversary is on a Thursday, and also Valentine's Day is that Sunday. So I kind of want to do some kind of dumb thing <laughs> for for Valentine's Day. I don't know what yet. That, that 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 might die. That might not actually be a thing that happens, but I think it'd be fun. I can't imagine what we would do as a group that would be Valentine's themed and not make me feel horribly awkward. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe making you feel horribly awkward would be like the main appeal though. Uh no. Okay. I know you're not supposed to feel, you know, not awkward about it. Uh let's see. Hobby hang random drawing can be a name on Mace's castle. Hey, maybe there you go. I think anyone here would be overjoyed to play with you guys. Yeah, we know a lot of people would want to do it. It's just that it's also a thing of like we got to make sure that tech-wise it's going to work. Uh and you know, it's just we just got to make sure that like the thing functions. Um, but I think we would probably want to limit it to people who we know are like actually like regular viewers. Because um, it's also part of the thing. If it's supposed to be like a community celebration thing, then yeah, like it's it's we don't want it to go to people who like popped in for just one stream or something. Uh, we want it to actually be like a kind of community celebration. So yeah. We'll see. So that's still in its infancy. Like we literally just thought of this last night. So I've been I've been jotting down. I've got like a document where I'm like kind of coming up with uh, how we can do that whole thing. Um, but it's also like a, a thing of like, man, I really want to give you guys something to actually spend channel points on because it's hard. Like I I I know how you can spend channel points for like a lot of kinds of streams but like a lot of the stuff that we do here isn't extremely conducive to channel points um still like Dufercon? yeah and we could even call it like a convention and maybe we maybe we do that maybe we call it like a mini online convention uh and that can be like what we do every year when it's like around you know mid-february when it's around like our anniversary of starting twitch that was the thing is we started twitch with a week of you know streaming every day yeah, starting that Tuesday at least. We didn't do the Monday, but we did the Q and A on yeah. Tuesday, and then we did the On the Anvil on Wednesday. Get what we did Thursday. Uh, Thursday was painting stream. I think it was hamster painting oh, no. the unmade. Yeah, and then um, Friday was a build stream. Friday was Stefan's game. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. Uh, so 
yeah, I think I think working in a build stream, a painting stream, and on the anvil, and then like a live game with players, that's four. You know, maybe for the build, maybe we do like another build jam. You know, like what we did with Tyler and Toby over Wildlands. So down for another build jam. That was, yeah, that one was a lot of fun. People seem to really like it. Me and um, me were talking about doing one at some point, but that was before we went back to working at home. Yeah, maybe we can think of a way to even it out so Toby just doesn't absolutely stomp Tyler again. <laughs> I, I think he won bad. literally every round uh, in the Wildlands one. Well, Tyler just has to get good. Yeah, get good Tyler. Yeah, but like, I'm not a miracle worker. No, I know. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying Tyler needs to concentrate on getting good if he wants to win. You could have made the- you could have, uh, fudged the points. Some people are just gambling with them on select beta test streams. Other channels use it as a way to influence gameplay. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, uh, yeah, like I thought, so I th I'm thinking like channel points to, um, channel points to maybe get extra votes in like a poll for deciding like, uh, if there's, if there's multiple ways that like a session can go, like we'll plan out a couple different options and let you guys choose between you know, which encounter gets thrown at them in the next room or something. And, uh... Of course, the big thing is the people who are playing will not be allowed to be on Twitch at the same time. I'll be watching to make sure that they're not... that their username isn't there. Granted, they could still work around it if they wanted to, but, like, I would hope, like, in the spirit of the thing, they would respect that, because the players being kept in the dark about it is kind of the whole point. Um... Letting people name NPCs, letting people, I think, come up with, like, things for Nate to say, or, like, throwing, like, a <clears throat> monster into an encounter. Uh, and especially, because if we're doing it in Vorpal Board, I can also prepare the assets from what people are saying, and then load them in on my phone. So, even Nate won't know what's coming until, like, I pop it in on my phone. It's like, and this is what's, you know, this is what you're fighting. Some, something like that. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Uh so that's the thing is I'm I'm looking at the I'm looking at the tools that we have at our disposal. I'm looking at the system, and uh, thinking about what we can do with it. Are those dwarves from the green stuff modeler hamster? The uh, let's see the green stuff modeler. This is uh, Skybor Miniatures. S C I B O R. Are they talking about the one that did like the turtles? Because those 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 green stuff turtles on Etsy were phenomenal. Oh no, it wasn't that guy. Yeah, because you you just ordered those yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah, I did. Of course, any anyone recommends any miniatures, I can't talk myself out of out of buying them <laughs> or not buying them, or you know what I mean. Yeah, we all understand. <laughs> <laughs> those turtles look phenomenal. Yeah, they look really fun. Yeah, DMN, these are the these are Skybor. Oh, Toby, I should send you. I got a bunch of uh, Humble Bundle recently did a pack of STL files for miniatures yeah. and stuff. So oh I got that yeah, pack. those look so cool. I got that pack, and they have like a bunch of frogs in there, a bunch of frog kin for different things. Like there's like this frog chef and like all this stuff, and they look very very good. <laughs> um, I should I should send you those files so you can look through them and see if there's anything you want. Yeah. Now there's, there's a lot of really cool stuff in there. Also, I used to do that a little bit. Also, I may ask a, a very interesting question that I'm surprised no one has asked yet. Yeah. Why? Why, Why is that? Mace building a cardboard castle? I think that's not because a very good answer, question. Like, why would it? Why would yeah, the answer is why not? I think this is my own private domicile, and I should be able to decorate it however I want, Amy. <laughs> Why is Ah, uh, she's a domicile. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I just I, sincerely, I just was having one of those loopy days that you have in quarantine, and I found it, um, and I bought it. Um, there wasn't really a lot of thought in it. It was mostly like. Oh wow! Look at that—a cardboard castle. And then I bought it. Yo, this song rips. What is this? That's fair, Mace. That's so much better. Most of my purchases. 
it's how it goes. I'm uh I'm pulling it up on my iPad now to like kind of try to make blueprints on here before I mess up the castle in person. I'm very scared to even start outlining stuff on it. Anyway, so uh, what Base is doing is she's actually doing research for KS9, uh, <laughs> the, the return to castles. There you go. So what you're what you're looking at is this, uh, this is actually a concept. This is R and D. Uh, yeah. yeah, Toby Toby mocked that up a couple days ago, <laughs> and so Base is doing the, the the sample paint job on it. Yeah, we're totally abandoning like miniature so scale things because yeah. I don't think yeah. people want to it. Actually well, it's still a miniature. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, uh... It's still it is, it is miniature compared to other castles. Yeah. Yeah, room scale war games are kind of coming into fashion, <laughs> and so we're trying to design for those. Nice. Well, what's different is uh, each person gets their own castle, so it's kind of like a way to socially distance uh, play games. Like, you have your castle. It's not six feet apart, but you can put a moat between you and your friend's castle, and it's just uh, it's a good way to keep barriers up. To, the haters, to keep barriers up, <laughs> but Chaos Nine was going to be the D the Dwarven Forge album. Surely we established that last week. Oh right, <laughs> well, that's true. Well, where do you think we're like? This is the actual studio. We have to build the album. Yeah, you, in a studio you, first. There's just no acoustics quite like a, a castle made entirely of bricks. <laughs> yeah, we're doing those well, bricks cardboard. Actually, cardboard. But... Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, my back. All right. I know. I'm having a hard time, and I'm sitting on the floor, too, so I know what the problem is, but, like, getting old. kind of out of room. The problem is we're getting old. No, I'm still young and spry. You're an old man. <laughs> last, last, last night, somebody... I'm older than you. Uh, last night, somebody, uh... <laughs> because, because it was Nate's birthday, uh... Nate said how old he was, and they're like, "You're 45. I thought you were." They're like, "I thought, I thought, wow, I thought you were like 30." Yeah, like, he is immortal. He is immortal, but it's like, because we're looking at that, and it's just like, man, no, like I'm, I'm the one that's like, 29. <laughs> like, Nate can go forever, and whatever he's doing, it's insane. It's uh. <laughs> Nate, what's your secret? Well, I exclusively eat peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> that is true. Uh. <laughs> Today for uh, the, the lunch hang, he said he was eating cheese on toast for his birthday to change it up a bit. It's like, <laughs> oh, man. Cheese on toast? Yeah. I don't even know him anymore, honestly. Yeah, seriously, right? Yeah. Don't fault Chris, Mace. He's hard of hearing. Excuse me? What did you say? <laughs> Let's see. It's almost like a DM screen. It's pretty huge. Yo, could you imagine DMing from inside that castle? Can we? Okay. <laughs> when yeah. we, okay, that's when awesome. We, when we when we do this game, can you bring your castle to the office? And can we? Can he? Can we have him DM from inside the castle? I would say yes, but I'm scared of Nate's jerky movements. Nate's one of That's sorry. entirely fair. He is a jerk. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would have to have it insured by Dwarven Forge before I let them uh, loan it out. Man, I want to see. Oh man, I want to see Jay pay out. I, I want to see Jay pay out for a cardboard castle. Let's go. He would do it. Oh, you just man. have to explain uh, it to him. Yeah, but I just... I, oh, I want that to be like a part of his history, is that he had to pay out an insurance claim on a cardboard castle <laughs> for his miniature terrain company. <laughs> Let's see. Do you think Nate wore something other than a black t-shirt? today uh today because it's his birthday oh absolutely not i he was wearing a black t-shirt today yeah. that's true I, we literally saw him at the meeting never mind i didn't say happy birthday during the meeting oh well you're a horrible worker <laughs> i think he's like me where we just forget that our birthday's a thing 
and that it's happening. I, uh, I got him some sushi for his family for dinner. Nice. I got something nice for your family to eat. Yeah. I know you're not going to touch it. Well, he, 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 uh, he got edamame and uh, teriyaki chicken, so. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, the one thing I find interesting about Nate is, like, even though he's a very picky eater, he's always willing to try new things when he, like, travels. So, like, if I've talked to him about, like, some weird food in, like, Japan or something, it's like, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I tried it, but I didn't like it. It's like, yeah, it's, it's respectable what you actually try. <laughs> like, so a lot of picky people don't even go near, like, weird foods. Since you guys are going to be doing KSA, does that mean limited restock on Castle and CBS sets? Uh, I think we're probably going to try to restock regular cities around the time that Castle, or around the time that KSA hits stores, just because, like, it makes sense, right? Like, there's synergy there. Like, the same reason, like, I'm pretty sure we're going to try to make sure that we've got Aaron Thor and Dread Hollow in, like, stocks when, when Wildlands hits stores. At least somewhere. Right. I mean, although our goal is to try and have the core sets in stock all the time, we just need to decide what those core sets are for some. Um, hey, Toby. Yeah, what's up? You're a pretty open-minded eater and everything, but is there anything that's so gross that you would not eat it or try it? Well, I mean, like, there's certain things I don't like to eat, like, like, shellfish or, like, more like... Right, more... right. But, like, is there anything that you're like, I would never try that? It's hard because yesterday I tried, uh, so... In China, they made... McDonald's made a Spam and Oreo burger. What? It's... Apparently on a bun, it's just two slices slice of cooked Spam, uh, crumbled Oreos, and the mayonnaise on top of it. So I recreated that and tried it two days ago. That's the most dystopian thing I've ever heard. I, was. I want to say it was disappointing because I thought it was either going to sound taste gross or taste like... It wasn't disappointing. Good. It was just it was exactly like, as bad as I thought it was going to be. No, just like bland. It was like... It didn't pop. Like, where's the specialness? But you know, I like trying weird it things. Sound like a good flavor profile, but I mean, I don't know. I it's sweet and salty. Only... Spam is the salt. Yeah, Oreos but... are the sweet. Yeah, I think the only time I understand that, but it's spam and Oreos. Like, if you give me something else sweet and salty, like sure, I I think that like jams on a burger like i've had really good sweet and salty stuff but spam and oreos hey i gotta try it so i can knock it if yeah you, i hear you. you you ate it just so you could complain about it look spam is made in minnesota i will die by spam all right um so one of my, one of my friends <laughs> you know how you know how much my friends <laughs> came up like last summer to visit new york from around the world yeah, yeah. Two, two summers ago, I guess. Wow, COVID. Um, uh, so one of my one of my friends who was from Missouri had spam for the first time while he was here because Miles had spam because Miles is also from Minnesota. <laughs> uh, and he just ate the spam like straight out of the can. He's like, "That's one of the worst things I've ever tasted." And I was like, "No, you gotta do stuff to spam. Like, like yeah. you can you can make good things out of spam. It takes work. Add it to right? eggs. Yeah." Because it, it is an extremely overpowering it taste by itself. I like it on like, it's so salty. I made yeah. eggs Benedict with uh, with spam. Yeah, you got you, you got to cut it with something that's kind of bland or sweet. Um, <laughs> like but like spam spam over rice is pretty good. Yeah, spam is good. Because uh, that 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 oh, balances they, out the flavor quite a bit. Uh, one of my favorite have... things. What's that? Don't they have spam sushi? And I know that like Hawaii yeah, does. They Hawaii love does spam. They do food. spam. Pineapple burger. Well, do you know why Hawaii, Hawaii loves spam? Sorry. When I was in Hawaii, I went to the grocery store. Yes, I do know why and there was a shelf of like. What was that, Toby? When I went to Hawaii, I went to the grocery. Like, at one point, I went to the grocery store. They fucking love spam there. And there was an <laughs> aisle that had 50 different, like, almost like 50 different flavors of spam. They also have a, another aisle like, like, similar amount of flavors of monster. <laughs> they genuinely so, did pumpkin spam. That sounds like my kind of place. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you, you you know why Hawaii loves spam so much? The war. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. We've all been to the spam museum, Chris. You're not enlightening us. <laughs> no, but well, but it is really interesting though that it was like just brought there as a bulk thing, and it just like stayed there because there's so much yeah. of it, and and it was yeah. put in the culture. That's really interesting. Yeah, just during World War II, like it was all sent over there for the soldiers, and then they bailed and left the spam. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so because of that, so because so my stepmom. My my grandma's Japanese. My stepmom is uh, was like grew up like in a half Japanese household in Hawaii, and so we we got used to like eating like a lot of like spam over rice with pineapple, and like that's genuinely really good. Like, but yeah, spam by itself is is rough. But you gotta you gotta cut the flavor with other stuff because it's it's so it's such an over it's such an overpowering flavor. It can be a great complement to a dish. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It's it's. It's all about understanding the culinary arts. Right. You gotta understand the culinary arts to really get the most out of Spain. coming from a guy, though, that's like, how do you eat vegetables? Vegetables are bad. <laughs> I did not say vegetables are bad. I do mean, I think I it? Yes. No. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty sure we just got you on tape saying vegetables are bad. Can we, can we roll that back? <laughs> oh, I'm deleting the VOD. Oh. You can't do that. You don't have the power to do that. Oh, crap. <laughs> I'm in control. Um, All the power's going to his head. Ha ha ha. I'm, the one, uh, I'm the one who deletes. I'm the one. <laughs> um, you should delete the, uh, the sound of me saying I would maybe try cannibalism. <laughs> Just while well, you're in there. Now there's, two sounds of you say <laughs> now there's two sounds of you saying that. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that we I'm glad that we can See, I'm a, get different inflections on it if we want. I'm not a picky eater, but I uh I am a pretty like I have morals. I am you know, I'm not a picky eater, but I am staunchly against cannibalism. <laughs> and here I thought you'd like Army Hammer. I do like Army Hammer, but it's uh it's a dark time now between us. You think it's? It, it was really cool of his parents to name him after his favorite meal. No, his he's named. We talked about this last week. He's named after um, the Arm and Hammer Company because he's part of the fortune. I know. I just it was a joke because of Arm. But you said the same time last week. Wait, have we have we have, we have we known that he's a cannibal for over a week? Haven't we? I've you've already said that joke. Maybe it wasn't on stream. I have no idea. Look, I've completely lost track of time. I've got to be honest. It's okay. But you're fine. The pandemic has been hard on all of us. You don't have that power. I'm the one who deletes. I'm the one who deletes. I'm the one who gains. Please don't do that. Don't do don't, what? Don't, don't bring Game Grumps into this. This is a safe space. You started it. You started it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Game Grumps did not invent the idea of saying, I'm the one who blank. Okay. Literally, I'm the one who knocks. Like. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to stop fighting with you because I feel a big gaping hole in my heart where my friend Chris used to be. Um, <laughs> spam a lot, pure gold. Spam a lot. that hole. I'm eating out, man. Spam a lot is very good, Vertex. <laughs> Classic. I didn't get to see Spam a lot. Very good. I've got the original cast recording. I only saw spam a little. <laughs> that's, All right. that's just straight up a lie. You lived in the Midwest. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen spam. Oh. You're also one of the oh, most that. Midwest people I've ever, I've ever <laughs> met. Or, or no, sorry, one of the one of the most musical theater people I've ever met is what I what I was trying to say. Which is interesting because even when I was going to school, I listened to like a handful of musicals and that's it. Well, you have, like, major spam a lot vibes, is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> Topulous, I deserve that booth. Get on there. Trying to get all these runes going, baby. You know when you're drawing and, like, your hand just, like, smudges everything. Yeah, that's what's happening with uh, me and these oil paints right now. <laughs> yeah. Just and smudging everything. I like the progress of my drawing hand, so... Nice. I'll shut it off now. Ooh. I don't... You have the original playbill that the cast signed. I still called everyone after the play. Excellent. 
think most performers oh, cool, Toby. should be pretty when you, good. When, after the stream, you should take a picture and put it in the Discord, too. Yeah, I'm trying to... It's, I was doing all the building oh, wow. and doing part, like, parts. That's amazing. Thing. Thanks. I missed That's it. That's the Dark World. I was too busy looking down. Okay, I got the rings up top. How does this stuff look? Um... So I want different lines. Okay. We can do this. Actually, at this point, change your brush. Man. I want to yeah. play Tetris Effect right now. Yeah, Tetris I'm Effect? I'm just thinking about Tetris Effect. Don't mind me. <laughs> it's so good in VR, man. It's like a real like religious experience, honestly. What? Mace, did you try your Tetris Effect at all when I brought the VR headset in? I don't think I did. Oh, man. You brought a VR headset in and you didn't tell me? <laughs> to be fair, it was when we were speed painting all the minis for the uh, for the Matt Lillard game. On a Saturday night yeah. at like 10 p.m., so. Yeah, it was, it was like an overnight thing. Man, I slept yeah. in the office. What's your favorite game so far that you've... Uh... In there. What's the favorite game that you've had for a, a VR headset? Ugh, honestly, Tetris Effect. Like, okay. genuinely. It's just... It's it's just such a good, like, test case for, like, what you can do with the medium. Like, just the sheer immersion and when the music drops in and the particle effects are going off and the tension and release that they managed to build by just like being able to like immerse you in the whole thing it's it's really something else like the fact that it can ele the fact that it can take something like tetris and elevate it like that is just phenomenal it's one of the it's one of the best use cases i've seen for like making vr games like they don't need to be all like narrative experiences like there's value in just like the level of immersion that you get from it Okay. 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 So. Amy, this this the dwarf model is a resin. Were they talking about Toby's or? Said him. What's that? Were they asking about Toby's? They said that's some metal mini, Those isn't metal it? Mini? This is a resin. Oh. Just a little finicky. It's cool. A lot of great detail in it. But uh, cleaning it up is a bit of a a chore. Well, Amy, you can use acrylic paints. Well, any paint, really. Just prime it first. Just give it a little, even a spray can. I think Hamster would be preferring to use acrylic paints, but he wants to learn oil. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, the, I'm not using oils because of the resin. I'm just trying to try something new, and it's uh, kicking my booty a little bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can use any color, uh, primer, I mean, I, I, especially for terrain, I like black just because, you know, it'll, if you miss a little spot, it'll just look like a shadow. Uh, and especially, you know, you use a lot of earthy colors and everything for terrain and like gritty stuff. So I like black weatherhead. Yeah, definitely black for like stone type of stuff. That's a cool piece though. Yeah. Don't be scared. Yeah, honestly. Sorry, what, Mace? Go ahead. Just real no, quick. No, I was just going to ask you. Uh, yeah, Amy, don't be scared. The resin, really, it's uh, it, it's a little more fragile, but it paints exactly the same. You can paint it pretty much just like your plastic stuff. Or d even Dwarvenite, you can paint it the same way. Um, What was your thing, Mace? Your comment? 
Um, I was going to ask if you were going to keep trying to pin in oils or if you want to give it a break after you've tried it now. I posed to Chris a little earlier. You might have been in the bathroom, but I said, I, 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 <laughs> uh, ye old outhouse, uh, I don't know. I want I want to get a handful of minis. I have a bunch of these dwarves, and I kind of just want to like keep doing it until I feel okay at it because it's uh really frustrating right now. <laughs> so I just kind of want to like punch through the learning curve. Because <laughs> the uh, effects that I've seen them when they people know what they're doing are like really cool and easy. Band of Badgers is raiding. Hey, hey. welcome! Thank you for that. Thank you, Band of Badgers. How did the stream go? Yeah, Vertex, these are like Windsor Newton oils from the art store. Almost done. Put yeah, Merc, both of the primers that Merc suggested will definitely work just fine on that resin. Man, Merc really knows their stuff. Merc and Toculus and... Man. There's, there's a lot of like very knowledgeable artists in the that community. Oh, Topulus just posted this like seventy five mil figure, this like armored, this armored gal walking down the stairs. Oh, it looks so good, man. Yeah, I'm always impressed by the stuff they do. Okay, I think it's all the runes hit. I have my my gilp. Uh, Verdex. Badger, 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 badger. Neo badger. McGilp. Oil painting medium. Maintains the body, increases transparency and flow. Although I haven't been Maintain using it. <laughs> very... Maintains the body? I could use that. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Can hey. I get a dose of that? Hey, I'm incredibly unhappy. Uh, I haven't been putting it in my mixes, though. I gotta remember to grab some of it more. Base of all the walls of fire seems to be done. Oh, it's awesome. also a challenging color mixing because I only have a handful of colors. So uh, to really get some of the, you know, different la yeah. layers of shadow and highlight is a bit of a challenge. Which I want to learn, so gotta gotta make go through it. You gotta get your head in the game. Getcha. <laughs> Yeah, so Vertex, I have uh what is this called? I don't know how to say the name, but it's a drying accelerator. So maybe these two combined basically make the liquid. A, a towel? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. It's called. It, the brand is Schminky, and it's called Trock Trocksnungs Beschling Beschlinger. You know? <laughs> that is a word that I understand. I don't know. Made in Germany. Go figure. I think I bought liquid. I don't even know what I have anymore. I don't just buy stuff. I just, like see it in a video and I buy it. It's probably somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. okay, I got an idea. Um... see how this works so if um next week if i start a brick wall are we able to make channel points for people to buy bricks i can set up channel points for buying bricks right now if we want i don't have bricks up i want to be ready okay i can set it up for next week then sick oh also well okay scratch that because Depending on how my mouth thing goes, I might not be here on Thursday. That's oh, totally that's fair. right. That's right. Well, I'll set it up and then we can just activate it and deactivate it as we as we need. I might just uh, come on screen a uh, stream high on painkillers <laughs> from the surgery and do an AMA and spill too many secrets and say just tons of things that might get me fired. You know, those are always <laughs> the best streams, honestly. You can do that. I can print. 
Uh, the tooth is fine. It's like actually really not that bad. I just want to get a permanent replacement one because right now I can't chew anything. I have to feed myself so I can't have like sandwiches and I have to, I have to use forks for my pizza like a psycho. Like who does that? Uh, probably the brain from Arthur. PBS is Arthur. Yeah, maybe. I remember they did a big thing I bet he's where... Vegan, he seems like vegan. Well, I know he eats french fries with a fork and a knife because that was in the episode. That's insane. Maybe it was poutine. Uh, nope. It was, it was a big deal because, like, the whole thing was, uh, Brain came over and stayed, uh, at Arthur's house for the night. And, uh, they had, they had burgers and fries. And he was like, oh, wow. Brain's eating, Brain's like eating his fries by cutting them up neatly with a fork and a knife. Okay. And his mom was like, oh, wow, he's so neat. Look at that. Like, this is, wow, Brain, you're so, you're so, you're so neat and, and tidy. Look at you. And Arthur felt like, well, I bet she just wants Brain to be your kid instead of me. And it was like a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I you that from, like eating the fries with the fork. What's up? I thought you meant just eating the fries with the fork, not cutting it up with the knife. Yeah, he sticks his fork in and cut, he, he cuts his fries like a steak. <laughs> yeah. That's bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Like, I understand, like, I don't like getting my hands greasy, so sometimes I eat like things. like. Yeah, I don't think that's too far. It's just, like, plain yeah. fries with a knife and no. a fork. It's kind of like, oh, come on, you can, you can angle it so that it all fits in. You don't need a knife. But what do I know? Anyway, I have eaten forks in the... I mean, <laughs> I've eaten fries in the past <laughs> with a fork. <laughs> yeah. No forgetting. Uh, Amy eats her pizza with a fork. Wow, look who's being insensitive, Mace. <laughs> It's me. It's, Classic me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> Mace out Sometimes here alienating our this. viewers. I don't mean to, but also you guys can all just alienate me and it can... It'll go fine. I'm easy to ostracize. Um, Merc90 sometimes covers their forks in ketchup and hot sauce, and that's when they use a fork, which I get that. Interesting, so using the fork to get the condiments to the, uh... Well, just to keep your hands from being all gross, I think. What I sometimes do is I eat raw meat and then go on the stove and turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> now that's just creative. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay. Yeah. You haven't gotten salmonella or anything like that? No, because I cook it. When it's in your mouth? Yeah. Well, I like the way it came yeah, out there, just, so let's yeah, go ahead I did, and I do that with all the rest of the water. Plank on the stove, turn the heat on, and a cooked meal in 30 minutes. Nice. Okay. Hey, David. David Moffat's in the house. Welcome, David. We got Paul eating a BLT. Excellent. Man, so much talk of food today. I guess that's kind of standard for us. It's but every like, second. Yeah. It's, we, have, we should do the minute marker for when we start talking about food. Like, the first one's when I go to the bathroom. The next one's when somebody attacks me or I attack someone. And then the third one's when all conversations just turn to food. Which is interesting, like, I'm actually not hungry today. Like, I've actually done a pretty good job of actually feeding myself. I made a big breakfast, and I, uh, peanuts were on sale, so I've got, like, a thing of peanuts on my desk that I've been eating throughout the day. Cracker Jacks? No Cracker Jacks, unfortunately. Oh, you know what? Something I didn't say earlier. We were talking about, like, what sorts of things we, we won't eat. Uh, the yeah, only taste that. that I have actually 
ever had a problem with uh, are like black licorice, coffee, and alcohol. Are like the only things that like, which I guess like I guess like the the main thing is they're all very bitter. I suppose. Um, those are the only things where I think I like my I, I can say like yeah I just don't like the way this tastes. Although I've gotten better with black licorice. I still don't. I still would not prefer black licorice, but like I don't dislike it as much as I used to. Wait, all alcohol or just beers? All alcohol mostly. Beer is probably the the worst for me. Um, it's not a big fan of the taste. Yeah, I'm not much of a beer fan. I don't like. I don't have as much of a problem with wine. I I like cider quite a bit. I think cider is the only alcohol where like I do enjoy the taste, like yeah. at least somewhat. But it's largely because it's mostly, you know, sweet. But not in, like, the rum way. I don't really like rum. Oh, I love rum. Almost everybody I know does, and it seems like I should like rum, because I generally like sweet things, but for some reason, just not into rum. No, alcohol, no. No liquor tastes sweet, doesn't taste smoky, doesn't taste whatever. It tastes like gasoline. <laughs> Yo! Okay. Yeah, let's start that fight. <laughs> what do you do? Know? <laughs> Hamster's right. throwing hands at the entire drinking community. Let's go. <laughs> no, I, I'll drink it, but yeah. none of it tastes good. They're, like, you read the description on the bottle, it's like, where is this coming from? I think yeah, like, like, this is another thing that you have to develop a palate for, though, because <laughs> I can taste the difference. I like I drink not. a lot, and I can taste the difference in like whiskey and rum and all that, and I can actually like taste when it's uh, flavored whiskey or when there's like oh, we aged this in a barrel for 60 days instead of, like, oh, we pinched this out of some sewer, you know? Yeah. Like, it matters. What am I... Well, we're slowly learning how refined my palate is, so. I mean, yeah. One of my friends like... recently turned 21, yeah. and his, uh, his, his, uh, his brother, who is a little bit of a amateur sommelier, uh, made a big deal out of it, and cracked out like a couple bottles of wine he's like oh and so here's like some you know some wine i got from you know blah blah this place whatever it's just like a, a, a cheap wine and here's this like really nice bottle i got from uh th this you know this place like this has like a, any liquid on like you know it's got all these notes and like all that stuff and described it and uh will was talking and he's like i didn't have the heart to tell him like they just tasted the same to me like i could not like i, I could not justify spending a lot of money on the supposedly better wine I thought they I mean, both just tasted bad. Yeah. It's like wines and like coffees when it says like it has a like a fruity taste or something like that. Like you don't, yeah. Like it's the sound. I guess this weird. wine has a part-time job. It's like, like <laughs> but it's like so that's why I thought was was disappointed. But it's just like I didn't. I don't. I feel wine. like there's a difference though between flavored coffee. And like the aromatics yeah. and like the actual like kind of palette of a coffee, because yeah. like I, I really like the smell of coffee. I just don't like the taste. Okay, <laughs> but there's like different flavors you can get from coffee that are like actually kind of fruity just from like the beans, like without yeah, adding flavor. That. Like it doesn't. Those like don't taste fruity to me. They just taste like coffee. But like the, well, it is coffee, like, but it's gonna also like. <laughs> it, I think it would be. I think it would be better if you had. I would be like better in a tasting where you have multiple to choose from. So it's like, oh yeah, this one's a little bit chocolatey, or oh, this is a kind of like fruity one, and this one tastes like like a thermometer. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I don't know. I've been fortunate enough to have opportunities of tastings like that, and like I used to be a barista, so like I had to get the palate for things really quick. So like I can tell by taste now if a coffee was. Um, it like took too long to make if it was made in hot water for too long or if it wasn't like made long enough like if it wasn't steeped long enough in either yeah. of those brewed long enough that's the word it also doesn't help that i only like drinking iced coffee yeah that's uh... a. <laughs> I mean it's whatever also like sometimes you just kind of want like iced coffee is easier to drink the worst part of uh food service for me was absolutely whenever i had to make people coffee because they'd be like oh you know just the right you know just 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 the right amount of milk and i'm like i have no idea what the right amount of anything is to put in this stuff like 
Like, I, I could not tell you looking at it. Like, I just got to go off of the color, basically, because I could not tell you when anything tastes like anything with coffee. I don't know what to do else. Those, uh, those uh, hellscape flames turned out pretty good. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. Nice keyboard. So, this yeah. is the, this is the final of what I did, where I did orange. So I did the base red, and then I basically slathered it in orange, and then I dry brushed more of the red over the top of it. And so all these, I'm getting the orange on, and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to put the red over all of them again. So, yeah. You know, I mean, we were talking about yellow and the flames, actually, and he was going for a more closer to some of the photography and some of them that doesn't actually have a lot of yellow. It's more of like a low burning, you know, flame. Yeah. And I'm also like looking at a thing where it's like, like, I honestly would have been happy dropping this on the table with just the red. Yeah, that's but awesome. This is, uh, I like the depth that this is bringing to me. It's also like, I also don't have a yellow that I am confident would actually go well with this and wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be too opaque. Sure. I still want some of the light to come through, and the only yellows that I have are very opaque. Uh, but I have an orange that is meant for fire that is kind of translucent, so I'm taking this orange that I got from Reaper and am throwing that on to try and differentiate it a bit. That mini was looking good, too. You had a good highlight going on, uh, Hamster. Thank you. Some of it is a little smudgy. You know, it's just like learning any new paint. Different brands have different properties. What I like, I, I like the hood a lot. I like the blue-gray hood. It's kind of what I was going for. I don't have a lot of the details scratched out, but I like the quick gradient. Like, oils, The the what's cool that I've seen is you can get like your 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 values your your light to dark like really fast it just blends together nicely but what i'm but i got i, I tried changing the other areas and so they're starting to kind of smudge together a little bit so <laughs> uh, there's one part that i like that i think i'll take the small victory and others uh i got some more experimenting to do <laughs> here here Yeah, the green sleeve is, the this is looking all right. Yeah. Some of it, I think, is just the colors. Because, like, when I based it, you saw at the beginning, some of these were a little more desaturated, and I got to knock them down a little bit. But uh, I'm not fluent yeah, I, in these paints, but... Even with acrylics, I still need to learn, like, <laughs> shadowing and then adding... Like, I added a yellow to a shadow for one thing, which really helped it, but there was some areas where it just wasn't the appropriate amount of yellow. I don't know how yeah. to explain this. Like, it looked good, but it wasn't perfect. Right. Right. Right, right. Just, well, just all the... Right. Ju all right. All right. <laughs> just the fact that you're adding a little bit of color into the shadows is... Uh, pretty advanced it'll start elevating your stuff i think i like doing that yeah yeah oh 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 <laughs> i want to see toby's drawing yeah let's let's see it uh here i don't know if the video is delayed at all but no we can see it but yeah trying to do like all the how steep is I added a, like a monorail type of thing here to get across the with like bridges and stuff, and parks, people for That's scale, awesome. lines hanging off of the different layers. I'll post a picture on the Discord after. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I've clearly done a ton of uh, progress on this today. You painted it white, right? Yeah, I painted it white. Pretty cool. I'm just scared to start it, so I'm you... like, I have my notebook out that I'm drawing preliminary oh. sketches. And I was doing it on here, too, but now my iPad's hey, just started. Hey, white so. 
Oh no. Uh, I've never had White Castle, and I can I only assume don't. it's not good. For whatever reason, I, mean, I feel like White Castle is on the same playing field as Long John Silver. I never had Long John Silver. It's, so. I mean, it's fast food. It's not. It's really not, not anything it's special. Like the, <laughs> and just like greasy and oily, and it's like. It's incredibly greasy, and as a kid, I loved it, and my parents hated it because it would make them sick. But me and my sister were like, "Hog heaven, butter us up, like get that grease all over our face." Hey, say good night to Amy. Bye, Amy. Amy. Bye. Thanks for hanging. Oh, man, I, I I'm feeling physically exhausted by trying to use these paints. <laughs> It's wearing my, my brain out. <laughs> What's that? Mine's from like crawling in and out of this castle. <laughs> That'll do it. I have to tear it down tonight too, because there's no way that I can exist in this living room with it up. Yeah, see, oh, Topless has a good point, and and someone else said it earlier too. You can't lick the brush with oil paints. That is my missing ingredient. You can't eat the paint. Well, how am I supposed to paint miniatures if I can't lick the brush? Well, you can if you weren't so scared. <laughs> yeah, I would just uh, have a much shorter miniature painting career. Got to find another snack. Okay, I need a replacement hobby snack other than my delicious acrylic paint. Spam! I have a snack for you. <laughs> What's you that? Uh, like a block of spam, yeah. hollow it out, like mix, like scramble eggs, put it in there and cook it. Whoa, so, like so the spam is a container for the eggs. Yeah. Are we all listening? <laughs> this is brilliant. Yeah, I'm trying <laughs> what I've been doing. I've been doing, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of scrambles lately. Ooh. Yeah, I, did a, I did a scramble egg and then I, like, one of them was scrambling the other one. I took the yolk out of it and then. I put the yolk on top of the scramble, so it's like a scrambled, uh, sunny side up. And then I injected the uh, yolk with a uh, hot sauce. That's why the fuck not. Do you guys ever get eggs on your burgers? Yeah, that's good. Eggs are yeah, I love burgers. eggs on burgers. I've never actually tried that. Extremely good. I think good. you would love yeah, it. Especially if it's a little bit runny. Yeah, runny, and then also it helps if there's bacon on yeah. it too, because then you're like, oh, I could have this earlier than 11 a.m. <laughs> Man, there's really no better strategy than just taking whatever you have around the house and throwing it in a pan with some eggs and just scrambling it all up. That is true. Yeah. I, I also have a crock pot, so sometimes I'll also open the carburetor and throw whatever crap is in there. And oh my gosh, I'm in here. You. I want a crock pot so bad. Yeah. Dude, crock pot culture is real. Yeah. I used to do like uh, kitchen clean out fried rices. So just put everything in the fried rice and cook it. Oh, oh. love that. Yeah. Sounds so good. And I need to eat. So, can we just rename this to Hunger Hobby Hank? Hunger? <laughs> you know what? That would be appropriate. That would be appropriate. We can change it the to hunger. A hunger. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Toby, it might actually, this might be a good question for you. Paul says, hey, super important question. We discussed it briefly last night, and so Chris w would have heard that. What do you guys think about an updated sculpt for a Dwarvenite dungeon to cavern transition piece? Dungeon to cavern transition I mean, piece. I would love to do more transitions. Like, Yeah. It, it's one of those things that gets cut a lot because, like, one, focus on more, like, uh, different accessories or different like parts of the, uh, you know, the, the terrain pieces and then like some of the old resin transition stuff is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I was talking about. Is they were talking about the old resin to dungeon or uh, cavern to dungeon transitions in yeah. resin. I'm talking about how cool those were. Oh, it's nice yeah. to have them back in uh, Dwarvenite. Closest thing we did was uh, what's it called. The lava to cavern one, right? Wasn't there enough? Was yeah, there enough? we did a lava to cavern in Hellscape. That's pretty yeah. good. Uh, I actually, I have it. It's not painted though, but I have it. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Also, a lot of times, like it's, it ends up needing to be a smaller piece, and then in the small piece, you can't really justify the transition well. Sure. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Man. Wow, those are yeah, on your feet, those flames are just glowing. They look like flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> you should put the powder on it. Uh, wow, look at yeah. that. Yeah. I could maybe hit him with a wash, maybe? Sorceress Cheeto. What kind of wash? Like a darker red? Well no, it'd be Yeah, what were you thinking? I don't know. Like what would an umber do something? What? Maybe no, I, I I might start going like too dark for fire, yeah. you know. I do have a red wash, but like this stuff's already red. Yeah. Main thing is like the, like the only thing I would want to do is maybe make the creases in the flame stand out more. Then you then you want to go lighter because it'll be hotter in there. Hmm. So if you left the red more so on the upper parts, actually on like as like a. Not a highlight, but a, a, like as if it's a highlight. I also feel like this is perfectly fine for the table as. Oh is. yeah, hundred like, percent. Yeah. Which is a good thing is like our last session, like he ended up using the walls of fire, and I was like, man, I really wish I had painted these. Oh. So that was kind of just, I'm like, it's so awesome that these might get thrown out that I might as well get them done. Yeah. Also, man, I got the red everywhere. Oh well. Mace, did you? What progress did you make on your castle? <laughs> That's a rude question. What? I I already said I've been so this I didn't touch obviously. I've Except been doing to go potty stuff in this. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I'm like thinking the thing I mentioned earlier. So I now I'm kind of like next time I'm on, I might pre-paint bricks and then like fill in people oh, on one right. side. Oh, that's right. That was a good idea. Yeah, and then I'm also like I want to do this tall visual joy. I don't know that porcelain type thing I was talking about earlier and I'm wondering so I'm going to make it a museum where it's a museum about me um, <laughs> and it's called Mace so it's like museum uh, and collecting etc something I don't know I don't care but the inside's going to be different colored and everything and I need to figure out what the outside is still for everything else and for one of the walls I was thinking of doing the twall design of the different careers I've had, because I've had a few interesting ones. Ghost Rider? Uh, Ghost Rider, the Nick Cage uh, movie. <laughs> um. <laughs> a museum. That's an, that, I like that. A museum, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. Because, like, I don't know. I have a tunnel, knickknacks, paddywhacks that need a little home. Knickknacks. <laughs> so we're figuring it out over here. We're going to, we'll get back to you. All right. I'm just going to leave this miniature how it is in frame. Cause from this angle, it looks decent. Uh, it looks great. Not from, I'm not, don't look at the pants right now, <laughs> but I am happy that I finally pulled the oils out of the box and they're not just gathering dust. <laughs> I hope dust wouldn't get in there. <laughs> well, Toby, do you want to hold up your uh, drawing one more time? I did it, and I'll post it on the Discord. Yeah, so that. check it out on the Discord. It already looks great. So much detail. I haven't done a drawing like like this minuscule detail. Yeah. So, I, yeah, close up, it looks like messy, but I feel like from far it looks okay. So. Right. I mean, that's the whole idea with miniatures. They look good from far away. <laughs> so I feel you on that. Yeah, the light kind of sucks. See anyway, but... Yeah. Well, I'm really glad you joined us, Toby. You're saying you're interested yeah. in coming on more, huh? Yeah. Anytime, being... anytime. Yeah. I don't mind being a regular. <laughs> we need a moderator to break up the fight, so it's good to have you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I am... Yeah. Toby's here to lay down the law. <laughs> So so, what do what do we got coming up? Is it just uh, on the anvil and ho and hobby hang? Uh, yeah, next, yeah. Next week on the anvil and hobby hang again as usual. Uh, next week the restock should be hitting as well. Ooh. Assuming that wrong, but next week is uh, we're shooting for Wednesday to be the restock. But you know it depends on how quickly they're able to process everything. Um, but they have received the stuff. It's just it's a complicated. This is a more complicated restock for them to sort than usual just because we have so many random sets coming in sure uh but they should be able to have it already by wednesday 
So that's what we're shooting for. Awesome. Uh, also, next week, your Wildlands backer, keep an eye out for your email. We're supposed to be sending out an update with information on the pledge manager uh, early next week, I believe, is when we're trying to do that. Uh, so get excited for that. Uh, we will be reopening the pledge manager for resin pieces and at least the water terrain trays, possibly more. Ooh, um, I just saw some of the photos of uh, the resin pieces. <laughs> they look phenomenal. Yeah. Like, Nate showed the, the picture of the runes last night. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, cool. the, of, the, of the Moonlit Arch. Yeah. And uh, just as a little teaser, and it's – people lost their mind. <laughs> um, beautiful, beautiful sculpt. I couldn't believe looking at that thing. Jeez. I can't wait for the rest of the pictures to come out because the, the, the threshold of worlds also looks phenomenal. Yep. The life in the yeah. trees. And... I love those. I don't know. I think they're some of the best looking things we've got. I think those pictures are some of the best looking pictures we've ever gotten yeah. of our stuff. As well, like it's it's really it's really something else. It's unreal. Beautiful. So sweet. Well, look yeah. out for that, uh, Toby. Thanks again for joining us. Everyone who came and hung out, thank you. And have a soon. good night. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Right. If you need Mace, she'll be in her castle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Get a password. Uh, take care.